Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of the Math Behind the Modules. This is Module 3, Lesson 2, Real World Positive and Negative Numbers and Zero. Okay, we did this classwork in class, and that's how we started this lesson. And it says to take it to the bank. Read example one silently. In the first column, write down any words and definitions you know. In the second column, write down any words you do not. Okay, so obviously I'm going to read this out loud for the video. Um, it says, for Tim's 13th birthday, he received $150 in cash from his mom. His dad took him to the bank to open a savings account. Tim gave the cash to the banker to deposit into the account. The banker credited Tim's new account $150 and gave Tim a receipt. One week later, Tim deposited another $25 that he had earned as allowance. The next month, Tim's dad gave him permission to withdraw $35 to buy a new video game. Tim's dad explained that the bank would charge a $5 fee for each withdrawal from the savings account and that each withdrawal and charge results in a debit to the account. Okay. Okay, so I did this lesson with one of my periods and words they already knew included bank account. Okay. Uh, deposit. I knew what a deposit was. Uh, allowance. Okay. Um, and then a few things they did not know, or some of them did not know. Receipts, debits, okay, uh, what else, withdrawal. Some knew what it was, some did not, so I'll put it in both, okay. and so on. Okay, so at the end of the lesson, hopefully, this is what happened. Want to knows became the words I learned. Okay, if I answered everybody's question and they left confident that they learned the material, then hopefully the words they learned were what they wanted to know and how to do it. In the third column, write down any new words and definitions you learned during the discussion, which I just explained. Okay, so then there was an exercise that they were to do. And it said, read the example again. With your partner, number the events in the story problem. Write each number above each sentence to show the order of the event. Okay. All right, so for Tim's 13th birthday, he received $150. I would say that would be one. And then his dad took him to open a savings account. That's an event. The banker deposited that money into an account. That's an event. The banker credited his account. Okay. Tim deposited another $25 into his account from his allowance a week, week later. And then the following month, dad gave him permission to take out or withdraw $35. That's an event. Okay, but giving permission and doing it are two different things, I guess. So let's move that to uh, here. Tim's dad explained that the bank would charge a $5 fee for each withdrawal from the savings account. Each withdrawal charge resulted in a debit account. Okay, actually, I'd leave that there. And then finally, the charge of $7 for seven. Okay. So number two says, write each individual description below as an integer. So if we opened a bank account with zero dollars, the integer that's involved here is zero. It says, make a number line model. Okay. But whenever we do a number line, we want arrows going both directions forever. And I generally like to put zero in the middle or the number I'm talking about near the center. That's all we're going to grab. 
So there's the zero, and I could put five here, 10 here, or negative five, and negative 10, just to represent positives. $150 deposit, that's adding $150, so that's a positive integer, it's a positive event. And then on our number line, if I had zero here, I might go by 25. And then put a dot here, and I forgot to mark this here, okay? If we're going to model something, we need to plot the point that we're talking about. So in this case, it's 150, and here it was zero. Okay, I credit an account for $150. Crediting an account means to put money in an account, okay? So I would just take this model and bring it down here. It's a repeat. Make a deposit of $25. That's positive. So I would, again, do a number line, 0, 5, so on. I wouldn't go by ones here because it would just take too long. We'd have to have 25 lines. We might run out of room. And that's, so if that's what they mean by using an appropriate scale, something that will fit. The bank makes a charge of $5. Well, if the bank charges you five dollars, they're taking it out of your account. You have five dollars less now. The bank is five dollars. Since that's a small number, I'll just do a unit measurement of ones. Finally, negative five is down here. Okay. And finally, Tim withdraws thirty-five. Taking money out of an account decreases its value. So again, we have our number line. Put zero here and go by negative five. And finally, we're down to negative thirty-five. And I put a All right. So there's some models representing our example two. How hot? How cold? Temperature is commonly used measured using one of two scales. Celsius or Fahrenheit. In the United States, the Fahrenheit system continues to be the accepted standard for non-scientific use. All other countries have adopted Celsius as the primary scale. The thermometer shows how both scales are related. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. This only goes to 50, so if I, I would have to continue this up here and 100 would be way up here, and that's the boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to 212 Fahrenheit. That's the boiling point. Okay, it says, where is 100 degrees Celsius located on the thermometer to the right? Okay, well, the answer to this is, it isn't. Scale only goes to 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. On a vertical number line, describe the position of the integer that represents 100 degrees Celsius. So that would be 100 units or degrees. above zero. Okay. Write each temperature as an integer. The temperature shown on the thermometer in degrees Fahrenheit. So you go to the top of this, this is the temperature. Fahrenheit's on the left, and that is 100 degrees. So when we're answering these questions, we have to be precise put that F to tell the reader that we're on the left side of the scale, not the right. 100 Fahrenheit is way different than 100 Celsius. The temperature shown on the thermometer in degrees Celsius. Okay, so now I go over to Celsius, 30. These are increments of 2. So that's 32, 34, 36, 38. So that is 38 degrees Celsius. The freezing point of water 
in degrees Celsius. Here's where they're telling us where freezing point is. Celsius is on the left. Freezing point is zero degrees Celsius. If someone tells you your body temperature is 98.6 degrees, what scale is being used? So I'd look up here and I'd see 98 right here, or it could have been 98 up here, but remember this is the boiling point on the Celsius side. And the saying, making my blood boil, is just a figure of speech when someone's angry, but if your blood was close to boiling, you would not be alive. Okay, so this is obviously fair. And the reason being, 98.6 Celsius is really, it's only 1.4 degrees away from boiling, so it's not possible. E, does the temperature zero degrees mean the same thing on both scales? So I would go up and I would look at zero degrees Celsius and zero degrees Fahrenheit. Here's zero Celsius, I've already circled. Zero degrees Fahrenheit is here. They're obviously not the same. That's how far off they are. Okay. So the answer is no. They do not mean the same. I took this one step further with the students and asked if anybody knew where they met. And we obviously can tell that as we go higher in the positive direction, we are 112 degrees off up here at 112. Here we are only about 54 degrees off actually 50 degrees off or so here. So the higher we go, the more we're off. So it must be this direction. And as you can see, 20 and 20 is a lot closer. 30 and so here's 100 and here's 100 all the way there. That's the difference from Celsius to Fahrenheit. But as you get down here, these lines are getting closer. Here's 20, getting even closer. There was no one in my first class I showed, but there is a location where the temperature does mean the same thing on both scales. In other words, where they meet, and it is at negative 40 degrees. Okay, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit equals negative 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, exercise three. Write each word under the appropriate column, positive number or negative number. Okay, so here I'm just rewriting all of these, so they're all separate words. Okay, and this is a neat feature where I wrote this, and it will recognize it and convert it into text, which is kind of neat. So we're going to use these, and we're going to drag them to where we think they go, positive number or negative. Okay, so now I've... I repeated what I have across the top here over here because I can't it's a part of the draw. These are all separate now. So what I had the students do was get in a line and go up and grab a number and drag it where they thought it should go. So a game should be a positive number. So that would go here. A loss is negative. If you receive money, that's a positive number in your account. If you deposit, that is positive so on. Credit your account, money's going in. Debit, money's coming out. That was the biggest confusion here because they think of a debit card as being able to purchase something and that's a positive thing. But actually whenever you debit your account, you're taking money out of it. So if I use my debit card, the money's coming out, it's decreasing your balance. A withdrawal will also do the same thing. A debit is a withdrawal. You're just using your debit card to purchase it. I'm just getting cash. To owe is a negative thing. To charge is a thing that's below zero. Okay. And then finally moving on to the last one, it says write an integer to represent each of the following situations. So a company loses. So if a company loses, that's a negative $345,000. Okay. Now we're going to start using this marker. It's so hard to write. 
and it's not very legible. This is okay. You earn twenty-five dollars for dog sleep. Earn is the key word. Earn means positive, so that's just simply going to be twenty-five dollars. Okay. Okay. Jacob owes his dad five dollars. <laughs> that's negative. Oh, somebody, that's not a good thing. That's a negative thing. You don't want to owe. Okay, I thought my wife was in this. Okay. Okay, the temperature at the sun's surface is about 5,500 degrees Celsius. Well, it can't be negative. The sun is not frozen. So that is definitely a positive number. Okay. The temperature outside is 4 degrees below zero. Below zero or to the left. So below zero, we're talking about a vertical number line. Here's zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. It's four degrees below zero, it's negative. Okay. Okay. Finally, football player lost 10 yards when he was tackled. Negative 10. Now it says, describe a situation that can be modeled by the integer negative 15. Explain what zero represents in the situation. Okay, you could say the temperature temperature was 15 degrees below zero this morning. Okay. Okay, the temperature was, was, is degrees, okay. It thinks my 15 is their essence, but it's 15 degrees below zero. 15 degrees below zero is okay. That's the end of lesson two, now go do your problems.